Well, good morning. How is everyone? I hope you're all well. It's Thursday, baby. It's Thursday, and you're looking absolutely amazing. And on that note, we're going to get straight into the meat and potatoes because we've got a couple of things to talk about. And for some of you, this is going to be a little bit like an echo chamber, as this is just a resonation from a video that I did yesterday, video two of two yesterday. You know, the downside with this system, this beautiful place we call YouTube, is you do two videos and you're likely only going to get notified for one of them. Sort it out, YouTube. Sort it out. But look, this is why this is important. Because a load of you, after I'd uploaded that video, a load of you would come to me and you would, you'd brought to my attention a video over on True Crime Design's channel. Now, I do have a lot of respect for True Crime Design. I think they do some fantastic, fantastic videos. And, yeah. But now I have a little bit of a problem. <laughs> Sadly. Because we're talking about this witness that has come forward. Dot. And I know some of you mentioned Dot in the comments. Look, I don't get round to answering every comment, guys, but... I read as many as I physically can, trust me. And I know some of you had mentioned Dot, because I'd sort of mentioned WSU Kim. A lot of you were like, well, if you don't trust Kim, you're going to fucking love Dot. Well, look, Dot ain't Dot, for a start. Dot ain't Dot. Dot is, well, Dot is kind of Dot, but she's not Dot. She's That's like another name, because her name is really... Brayden, or she goes by Brayden, because she used to be Dot, and she now wants to be Brayden. Anyway, if you want more of an explanation as to that, head over to Jules, Jules of all trades, because Jules actually came to me yesterday. Now, that's before some of these videos had even come out, and she brought my attention to the TikToker. And I'm not going to I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'm not going to spoil it for you. After this video, head over there. And this person on TikTok, large account, actually shows you exactly who Dot Braden, Dot Braden, Braden, Brot, Drayden, Brot. Yes, you'll see exactly who they are. But the concerning thing to me, the, the thing that's really scary, is it would appear to me and again, this is the little bit of what resonates from yesterday's video. It would appear that there are people sprinkled in amongst this case. That they have a specific agenda. And it's these people that they feed upon the people who... When it comes to a case like the Idaho 4, there are people who really want Brian to be innocent. Now, this channel has always been an advocate for innocent until proven guilty. But we have to be open to the fact that Brian Coburn could indeed be guilty. It's not trying to say, look, Brian Coburn had nothing to do with this and there's some sort of conspiracy to, to get him had over for a crime that he definitely didn't commit. It's about trying to build a community that is open to listen to everything. And the downside is, is there's these people who feed on certain people who search for the more nefarious and spectacular storyline. You know, drama sells. Drama does sell. And if these people can manipulate channels into pushing out these stories and they can see sort of the, the aftermath of what they're created. I believe that they look at it and they step back and it's almost like their masterpiece. And I think creators have to be so fucking careful what is going on. I see that True Crime Design has now, they've left that video up and they've turned the comments off on it. And I would imagine that the comments have been turned off for one or two reasons. It could be wrong because I know that YouTube, if the content in there is of a specific nature, then they can remove ads, obviously, and they can also remove comments if the comments get a little bit too in a certain way. You can kind of battle it. You can keep turning back on. Eventually, they'll get bored and they'll leave them on. But that's by and by. The comments are off, and I would imagine that the flip side of that coin is, is that the comments are off because there's a load of people in the comments that are saying, or had been saying, 
look, this person, this witness who has come forward is fake. It's yet another fake person. And the danger of all this is that the more of these people that come out and the more of these people that we as channels and allow you guys to be subjected to, the less you are going to trust the ability to be open-minded and to listen to everything. Because when the shit hits the fan and it turns out that this person's an idiot, this person's an idiot, they lied through the teeth, they're not even who they say they're supposed to be, they're not a fucking 18-year-old student, they're a 54-year-old fat man sitting in his basement covered in fucking peanut butter, you're going to think to yourself, well, I can't trust these people. And, you know, we <laughs> that's the truth. That's the truth. These people are damaging because you're taking a situation that is genuinely, genuinely a, a, a situation that has questions. Like Brian Koberg, this entire, this entire situation where he was arrested, he's been charged, and the things that are missing in amongst that, there are questions, but these people are making it they're making it something that's not. Now, in True Crime Design's video, she touched on this this person, Dot, <laughs> this person. They were touching upon the, the victims and the injuries that were sustained. And this is, again, what I was talking about in a video yesterday. I told you guys, I was sent still images that apparently came from a video. Now, the thing what is always amazing to me is you've got a phone in your pocket that is 4K resonation. I could do a video and take a screenshot, and that would be like a photo. But these people will always say, I've got videos, I've got, still, these, I've got this video, and I've got this still from this video. And you look at it and you think, well, I can't even fucking make out what that is. So I, can't, I don't know what you were filming that on because it looks like you filmed it on a fucking potato. But anyway, what they're trying to say is, we've got this video, this is a still from it, I'll give you it, I'll give you the video if you want it, yada, yada, yada. Very similar to the situation with Sloofy Goosey, when people are trying to approach her to say, look, I've got this video, I've got this video, you might want it, you might want it. And, you know, this happens all the time. But there was information contained within that sort of backwards and forwards communication that talked specifically about the victims and... The injuries that were sustained and the worrying thing is is you think to yourself right so these people are coming forward and they are saying some it's horrendous i will say now that if there is any credibility to these whatsoever and i will put this here right now and that is that if there is any shred of truth to any of what the information is that i've been sent and specifically talking about the injuries, which again kind of ricocheted into this true crime design video. Take away who Dot is, because Dot could just be someone who had the same information given to them and utilised that to further their online career. But yeah, this this info regarding the injuries, then I'm telling you now, that further proves that this wasn't Brian. It wasn't Brian. Or when I say it wasn't Brian, it weren't Brian on his own. And it weren't done in the time frame that we're supposed to believe it was. That is not something that's happened. But anyway, that's by and a by. But what I'm going to leave you with, guys, is this. So, yeah, all you guys who reached out and said, go and check this video out and spoke about Dot and this, this person coming forward. Please, 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 please. Please, just be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you, well, let's put it this way. Be careful what you take from who you listen to. Even my channel, do your own research on everything. And, yeah, because some of you guys have now got this, this poison in the ointment. There's stuff that you've been told. There's stuff that you're being fed that is not right, it's not accurate, it's not true, and yeah, 
and I just hope that we can repair that damage because this is what you still see with regards to what News Nation said way, way back and you still hear it being spoken about when people talk about Brian's definitely guilty. He's the guilty of sin. He did it and we know he did it because he's an incel. You know it because he put cameras in this person's house and he spied on them. He was doing stuff in the bin when he got arrested with gloves. Why would he do that? Answering that question, I've spoken about this multiple times. Yes, apparently, Brian Koberger had gloves on. He was going through the bins, doing rubbish, yada, yada, yada. But what do we learn from that? We learn that still, despite the fact he was doing that, when they wrote down what they took from the property, there was fuck all there. There was nothing there. So whatever he was doing seems to have no relevance to anything. And again, Ann Taylor has stated that there is no connection to Brian and the victims. There is none. There's no connection whatsoever. No DNA in his car, no DNA on him. There's no proof that he cleaned DNA from his car. There's nothing. There's no... Clearly, what she's trying to also state is that there's no connection via social media, anything like that. And look, maybe she's lying. Who knows? But... So the bin situation, the night he was arrested, there seems to be no relevance to it whatsoever. They was doing nothing. And if you look into the the laws surrounding that situation and separating rubbish and you listen to the fact that Brian very likely had some form of OCD and the multiple records of him being a bit of a night owl and flitting around at night from running to banging around, it, it just seems as this is just something he did. The bloke maybe was just a fucking weirdo. Do you know what I mean? Had word quirks where he would do weird stuff. Being a weirdo, having word quirks, don't mean that he was in Moscow uh, murdering four people. Just have a fucking open mind. And please, 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 when you talk to me on this channel and you say, look, I didn't like this video, you do this, you say that, I don't create channel content just for one person. I do it for everybody. There's 65,000 plus people around here. And not everybody's going to like every single video that I do. But what I am going to say to you guys is that I'm going to always be true to myself. And I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to break. I'm not going to fake for friends. I would rather you guys make a decision on me being honest and decide whether I'm right for you or not than me think, oh, if I pretend to be this person, they'll like me more. So get used to it, because you're either going to hate me for being <laughs> real, or you can... Yeah, that's it. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful if you're a content creator, who you're listening to as well. Like I say, we've all been there, I've been there, got caught out of cropper, like getting your knob caught in your zip, and it ain't pretty. I'll catch you all in the next one.